Welcome to finding new members for your club. This is round two officers training for District 11. It is taken from the Better Club series from Toastmasters International of the same name. My name is Carol Krause and I am the program quality director and I'll lead you through this exercise today. I invite your questions and comments about the training. My email is toastmaster at peoplepc.com. Over on the left-hand side, you'll see the table of contents for today. And over on the right, there's some information about pathways. Coming in the first half of 2024, they are going to update some of the paths to be more modernized, presenting yourself online, how to look and sound your best online, how to manage meetings in the digital space, and long overdue, how to conduct better hybrid digital meetings. New members are important to the success of every Toastmasters club. New members mean better meeting programs, new ideas, a larger pool of potential leaders, more fun and more funds with a D for the club. But a host of activities and responsibilities compete for people's time and attention. Priorities and interests just change way too often and members will come and go. Some will leave the club. In fact, we know that every renewal, we lose about 40% of our members. Priori priorities and interests of our members change. And without enough members, clubs can't provide the positive, enjoyable, supportive environment that is the hallmark of the Toastmasters Learning Program. Every member is responsible for contributing to the success of the club, number one, and to the success of fellow members, number two. That bears repeating. Every member is responsible for contributing to the success of the club and to the success of fellow members, ensuring the club has enough members to properly conduct club meetings is part of that responsibility. What are some things that members can do to help attract new members? What do we do when something wonderful happens to us? Well, we tell somebody, we tell a friend, we tell a relative, we email a coworker. A personal reference is the very best way to learn about something as amazing as improving your public speaking skills, right? Maybe we can rouse the curiosity of something, of someone, if we do something as simple as wearing a Toastmasters pin. Maybe we can share an article from Toastmasters magazine with someone and tell them about how fun our club meetings are and how we're overcoming our fear of public speaking. Anyone up for distributing brochures? Those can invite guests to your club meeting or Hey, why not start a meetup for a Facebook page and have members join and comment on? Or maybe what you could do is host a workshop at a library or in a corporate meeting room if you're a corporate club. It can be an easy peasy workshop. It can help with a public speaking skill. It can help college students with uh, grading papers or with pre presenting something that they need to do for class. And finally, how about a speech craft? Has your club tried a speech craft? They're very successful. So let's take a look at the first one here. Talking is probably the easiest way that we can add members to our club. Maybe someone is having a conversation with you and they tell you that they have to get a eulogy ready for a funeral. Invite them to your club. Ask your club members to do a table topic session on things that might be said at a eulogy. That person can sit there, take notes, and voila, their eulogy is partially written for them. 
or maybe you're talking to somebody and they are the father of the bride or the mother of the bride and they're a little bit nervous about what they've got to say invite them to your toastmasters meeting have your members help them out with ideas and then maybe each person could get up there and just give a proposed mother of the bride speech help your friend to get some ideas and then of course invite them to join your club to polish those skills so member many member clubs have pins that they use to show membership in their club you see some here rotary knights of columbus the lions club they all have a pin you wear it on your lapel or scarf and then people can ask you about it so i have one of these ask me about toastmaster international pins and when i wear that and somebody does ask me i have an elevator speech ready my elevator speech goes like this. Toastmasters is a nonprofit international organization that helps its members with communication and leadership skills. It helped me improve my public speaking skills. How could it help you? And then I wait. And usually they'll say, well, I'm already pretty good. Or I, I stumble over ahs and ums a lot. Or I, I just freeze up. I can't do it. I don't know how you do it. That's a perfect opportunity to say, I think we could help you. How about going to a meeting with me and let's just see. So that's a good way for you to get some good members. Or how about if you just wear it to work every day? Eventually somebody's going to see it and ask you or pin it on the drapes in your, your building or in your cube somewhere. At least somebody would notice that pin, right? sharing so one of the outcomes of COVID is that Toastmasters magazine is now entirely digital to find it log in at toastmasters.org and then click on the bar called magazine read the articles and get familiar with them and share it with a friend a relevant relative co-workers or even somebody on social social media so if somebody says something that was in one of those articles and it rings a bell with you just send them a link to it we all have smartphones now so it's easy peasy to send them that article and then follow up did you enjoy the article i sent you my toastmasters club meets blah 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 i'd love for you to come with me or send them the zoom link to it or the team's link and invite them to join in on your club now you can also show it on, just share it on Facebook or Instagram. If there's one that you find especially relevant, just post it there and have your friends read it online there. You can talk about it on LinkedIn. You can even write an article to submit yourself. The parameters for writing an article is right there at toastmasters.org in the magazine section. Maybe you'll be a published author, huh? The ins and outs of dynamic speaking is one of the articles that I really liked. I learned that dynamic speaking comes down to, to connection uh, from my breath to the members. That's my connection. I learned how our club could start using parliamentary procedure in the article called Get Down to Business with Parliamentary Procedure. In the article Connecting the Dots from Goals to Purpose, I learned that following your curiosity and having a wide variety of experience leads you to the bigger picture. Most of my meetings nowadays are on Zoom. In seven important hand gestures, I learned that when I'm speaking, I need to back away from the camera a little bit so people could see not only my face, but my hand gestures, since audiences are more easily persuaded by what they see rather than what they hear. Closely related to our magazine is the Toastmasters podcast. These can also be shared on social media or a link sent by email or text when you find an article that might help a friend or coworker. There's an episode where a voice coach helps you improve the quality of your voice. Who, who of us couldn't use that? Now, have you tried distributing brochures such as these? 
So you down here in the lower right hand corner, you write when your club meets, the time, the place, etc. And then you can post these someplace. You can also take a picture of them or download them from postmasters.org digitally and send them by email to friends and coworkers. People who go to the library are looking for information and just maybe they're going to share that information as a presentation. They'll run across your brochure and they'll see that maybe that's a place for them to practice. They might need to improve their public speaking skills. So that would be a good place for them to find birds of a feather. Or maybe they're the newly elected president of a political group, or they just need to learn some leadership skills. And they, they'll check you out to see if this is the place to do it. Possibly the churches around your meeting place in your town or near your workplace could use Toastmasters. Churches have classes for kids and adults, and those who teach them need training in public speaking skills. Your club has the ability to help them. They need to know where you are and who you are so they can send their teachers there. Now, where do you work? Can you place these beautiful posters with your meeting place time and days of the month in the break room? How about in HR, or maybe just in your cube or office. Department heads give meetings, and if you're in one of those meetings that could have been an email, that is the person that you might ask if they've heard of Toastmasters. That's how I learned about Toastmasters. I was giving a sales training, and the CEO came in and sat in the back of the room, and after it was over, he said, hey, Carol, have you ever heard of Toastmasters? better believe I got myself to a Toastmasters meeting. Is there a strip mall near you? Ask each business if you might place this in their window. Does your condo have a community building? Place one there. Where are young professionals hanging out today? Do you know? Put one there. I've seen them at Buffalo Wild Wings because I'm a young professional, right? So you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, for example, and you ask if you could place one in the, the front of their building someplace in their waiting area, maybe, or how about inside the restroom stall? I mean, they're going to sit there for a minute so they can read what you've got to say. Captive audience, as they say. Another place where young professionals hang out is at a craft beer distributor. Craft beer is wildly popular these days. So how about if you go there and post one there? Maybe you could lay one in each table. Maybe you could also post them in the bathroom stalls there. Start in a, a mail campaign. Here's something you could do at a club meeting. So you have these brochures all filled out with where your club meets, the date, the time, etc. You hand one to each person and ask them, oh, and also hand them a post-it note. Ask them to write a note to a friend. And encourage them to come to the club meeting and then ask them to fold it up give them an envelope have them stuff it in the envelope and then you collect the envelopes stamp them mail them and then maybe offer some sort of reward or incentive if one of those members actually gets a friend to come to the club that's one way members can help members enjoy toastmasters Social media, yes. Is your club on Yelp? You can list your club there. It looks like a business, and people who are on the site can attend your meeting. Now, who goes to that site? Are other businesses or people looking for a business? So they might just stumble across your club. You, your club probably has a Facebook page. So why not pay to boost an ad? Your VP of Public Relations can do that to show their care for the club. When you create an ad for Facebook, you can include WhatsApp and Instagram too. All of those are owned by Meta. You can reach all ages that way. Gen Z is definitely not on Facebook. Millennials love Instagram. Gens XY and Boomers are on Facebook. Club dues can pay for this outreach. Some clubs charge an additional $5 to $10 each time a member renews. 
uh, so that they do have a working budget. Or maybe a couple members would be willing to donate the money for your club just to get you started. Meetup costs about $90 for six months. And you can list your club meetings there with lots of photos. You could post photos there after every meeting, just like you do on Facebook or Instagram. People that blog, that like to blog, will go there for your blog. If your members are on level four, they can do that blogging speech and start their blogs there. Maybe they'll attract somebody and they'll eventually come, come to your club too because they're curious where they learned how to blog. Uh, that blogging is on level four, but in some, some paths it might be on level three, some people have told me. So each month you can also have a guest blogger to change who writes the blog. It for sure would add some members to your club because once they learn how to blog, it's going to be very interesting there. Or how about having a one day workshop where you can help college students with their speeches? Maybe each member of your club can listen to and coach a student, or maybe a one day workshop at the library on speech training or how to rehearse a speech. Have club and Toastmaster information. Maybe make a video of part of your meeting. And if there are three or four guests at the workshop, do an, uh, do an improv table topics. They'll get a kick out of that. When they really like that, tell them to come, come to your meeting. You've got to think of your club as a service organization. How can you serve your community or your corporation? What kind of public speaking skills can your club put on a workshop to attract those who are not members so that they know your club exists, know the kind of help you can offer and attend? It's just changing the mindset. So you could re just reserve a room around lunch hours and provide some information that would be useful for your coworkers. Maybe you could promote it as looking good on Zoom or Teams. Everybody wants to look better on the video and give them pointers on maybe what to have on their backdrop, uh, what to wear, where to focus their camera, how to gesture from the elbows up so others can see, etc. Just keep in mind that workshops are your club's service effort. Has your club tried a speech craft yet? No matter if you're in a corporate club or a community club, giving the public the opportunity to learn public speaking in a few meetings is an enticement that hi friends do you have to speak before a group in person or online much like i'm speaking to you now speaking success is tied to life success often through little milestones such as a job interview an important work presentation, a graduate dissertation, or even a social speech, such as a wedding toast. If you have any of these or another speaking engagement coming up, Toastmasters International can help you prepare and practice through its Speechcraft program. Since 1924, Toastmasters is synonymous with excellence in public speaking, offering education and training in club settings. But you don't have to be a member to get the benefit of Speechcraft. For your convenience, Speechcraft is a condensed version of what Toastmasters offers its members and is available to you in four, six, or eight week programs. Sign up for a Speechcraft event today. And did you hear her say since 1924? In 1924, only men could join a Toastmasters club. So we are celebrating our 99th year this year. I have a question for you. Do you think that the organization has changed since 1924? Only men could join then. How about now? That's, that's a change, a big change. Has it changed more than once? I've been a Toastmasters off and on since 1999. I belonged in three states, Illinois, Washington and now Indiana. And I've served as VP of membership, VP public relations, but mostly as VP of education. 
do you think the method that we use to attract members, even back in just 2000, is still viable today? Think of the changes that our nation has undergone that has influenced changes that we have today since just 2000. The real estate and banking crisis of 2008, 9-11, or how about the COVID pandemic? Have those events changed the way we do things? You bet. Laws were changed, so banks tighten up credit lines. The USA Patriot Act was passed to help us under, uncover terrorists on our soil, and messenger RNA vaccines were born to help us effectively ward off disease. How we attract members must change also. Think of the tools we have and how you can use them to reach somebody who's just beginning their career. Where a newspaper ad might have caught your eye when you joined the club, a 24-year-old today might learn about your club through a social media site that you've never even heard of. Toastmasters has changed. We have many members who will not record their speeches in Pathways, but Pathways is a change. That's all, it's just a change. Here's some things we can do. Uh, how about a Toastmasters background on your company Zoom meeting? How about join a book club? Maybe join Meetup and be that person who gets on somebody's site and says, hey, have you guys heard of Toastmasters? My club meets here or there and invite them to it. Might do the same with Eventbrite. How about a yoga meeting? You could wear your Toastmasters button there and tell others or tell your yoga instructor about it. Do you belong to a gaming group such as Dungeon and Dragons? Wear your Toastmasters pin there. Bring your brochures there, but try to find some members for your club there. How about your church group? Small groups would be a perfect place for people who are trying to speak and express themselves to get some training, but more importantly, some evaluation so they know how they sound and they can improve. And then finally, food bank, pet shelter, political organization, litter cleanup crew, social media. I mean, there's just so many places where you could share Toastmasters. Do your Facebook friends know that you're a Toastmaster? Is it on your LinkedIn page? Is your Pathways badge there? Does your Instagram identify you as a Toastmaster? And little things that we don't think of are places where we can promote that and gain members for our club. Toastmasters International grew out of a single club. Yep, a bunch of men sitting around in California. Ralph C. Smedley hosted the first meeting of the Smedley Chapter One Club at a YMCA in Southern California on October 22nd, 1924. Yes, the Smedley Chapter One Club still meets 96 years later. Ralph brought a, club, a group of young men together to improve their communication skills. And according to the LA Times, he named the group, the group Toastmasters because, quote, the format was like that of a banquet with a leader chosen at each meeting to act as a master of ceremonies and introduce the speakers. The club was a big hit. Smedley later speculated that Toastmasters took hold in Southern California because of the region's high spirits and optimism. But there was way more to it than that. Ralph Smedley created the very first manual himself. Doesn't that really look old fashioned, 1924-ish? Others followed over the years. Look how that has changed. Toastmasters Board of Directors in, 20, in their 2010 strategic plan identified the need to modernize the communication program. They said, we've had manuals since 1924. It's time to do something different. The way club meetings work would stay fundamentally the same, and the program would maintain Toastmasters' four guiding principles. <clears throat> And here are those principles. They pretty much would stay the same. 
and they would include experiential learning, self-paced learning, peer evaluation, and mentoring. Now, what is experiential learning? That might be a new term for you. Pretty much, it means learning by doing. And isn't that what we do in Toastmasters? Along with tailored learning and transferable skills, this new program would offer members a clearer path toward Toastmasters recognition and achievement awards, greater access to educational materials, expanded learning resources, such as video and digital content. If you were around when we had the competent leader, pretty much what they had was the internet was a new thing. So they were talking about using that and how to use a video projector. So this revital, revitalized education program is vital to our future, said past international president, Pat Johnson, Pat Johnson, who led the Learning Masters Group. We must adapt to a changing world, and this is the best way to meet members' needs in today's global marketplace. The goal was to use experiential learning. But what does that mean? It's learning by doing. So look at this, the, all the dog heard was blah, blah, blah. And sometimes when we're speaking, that's what it sounds like. But by experiential learning, we learn by doing, we give a speech, we get an evaluation. <laughs> Along with changes to the program, come opportunities for new ways to reach people who need to learn communication and leadership skills manuals replaced by online experiential learning called pathways new technology this means our clubs are changing is your club adapting is every member giving exciting speeches from pathways are they using their computers instead of paper to do their work are they working from home haha <laughs> computing rather than commuting today our clubs offer workplace communication skills how to look good on video. Is your online talk? I'm sure that 99 years ago, Ralph Smedley had no vision of going to work at home with a computer. That is the result of many changes over time. It means members in the transition phases had to adapt to those new changes. Today, many bosses seem convinced that remote work is hampering productivity, but companies with remote or hybrid policies appear to be hiring people at about twice the rate of employers that are fully in office. That's according to a new analysis published at Forbes.com, underwritten by Scoop. Scoop is a hybrid work management software company. Now, what does all of this mean to Toastmasters? It means if you're a corporate club, you have the opportunity to grow your club. We just need to figure out how to reach each of those new employees. What are your thoughts about this? Email me at toastmasters at peoplepc.com with your thoughts, okay? Here are my thoughts. Contact HR and send them digital information about your club. In round, round one, I email VPs of public relations and VPs of membership some documents that are perfect for HR to include when onboarding new employees. That's the key to growth for your company is new employees. They're coming on board all the time. Make sure they know that you're a valuable asset to their current job and to getting another job. Email me if you want those again, I'll send them out to you. Now here's another idea. In Microsoft Word, type up a brief note about your club meeting that you can copy and paste when you're in a Teams or Zoom meeting and there's a new employee there. All you have to do is go back to your Word document, copy it, put it into the chat to the new employee and welcome them to attend your meeting. Does that make sense? Huh? Yeah. So it might go like this. 
Welcome to our company. I'm the VP membership for our company-sponsored Postmasters Club. We meet on Tuesday from 11 a.m. till noon, and we would love to have you visit. Here's the link. We learn how to better present our reports and get to the point, how to look better for virtual meetings, talking off the cuff, and we have a virtual learning platform that you can access anytime, anyplace. That's Pathways. Love to see you visit. You might also send that note in an email or even in a text to a new employee. This study means that it's vitally important that you constantly publish your meeting date and time on whatever means your company provides for you so that you can share general news with co-workers. It might even be a company newsletter. In Pathways, we learn many forms of communication, not just giving speeches. And we try our hand at leadership, right? Can we use our experiences to attract guests that will become new club members? You bet. In level four, as I said before, you learn to write a blog. You can blog for your company. You could blog for your son's baseball team or for your Toastmasters club. If you do belong blog for your club, put a link on the club Facebook page to the page that you blog on, and maybe you'll catch a few new members for your club. Another project in Pathwork Pathways is creating or updating your social media page. So let's say you create a LinkedIn page and you link that to Toastmasters International. You send a message, a message to those who link up with you about your meeting. Maybe you include a photo of someone giving a speech with an invitation to somebody, anybody that you're with and invite them to your club meeting. Or post a notice of your club's open house there. Maybe you start writing articles on how to speak better. And then after you write the article, send an email link to all of your coworkers. On the right here is a LinkedIn post. Yeah, that's it. Uh, on the right is a LinkedIn post uh, promoting one of our paths, innovation strategy. And I think uh, this Toastmasters at Pallister did a really good job at trying to attract people because they've told not only what the name of that path is, but what it can do for you, the benefits of it. Another way to attract guests to your meeting would to be include a co coworker in the team project that's in level five. It doesn't say you only have to have Toastmaster members as part of that team project. So invite somebody that you think could use Toastmasters and they'll get to know the Toastmasters, they'll become working with them and probably join. Or maybe you wanna go to HR and ask to start a new club with where, where you work if you are currently in a community club. Technology is an excellent way to reach prospective members. So many are working from home now and their connection with others is through their computers, phones, or devices. I'll show you a few ways to attract guests using your computer in one way, the old fashioned way, simply driving around. Here's a way to stretch your skills and help your club get members. Why not create your own quiz and post on your social media to pique the interest of a uh, potential guest? And if you don't know what questions to ask, <laughs> there's even a quiz question generator to help you. If you don't know how to do this, just take a picture of this slide, show your kid, and ask them to help you with it. Here's the old fashioned way I was talking about. Drive them to your meeting wherever you may go with a Toastmasters license plate. As a special reward for your club achieving a goal, why not buy each member a license plate so they can talk up Toastmasters on the road? Now these cost less than $8. You might offer an incentive to a member who brings a person who was attracted by the plate or officers can decide to use this as an incentive to bring a guest who joins a meeting, right? What an easy way to reward somebody. 
why not hand your phone to the person next to you when you go to give your next speech? Post that video of your speech on your social media. And of course, cut out the best part and post it on TikTok. Cut out the funniest few seconds and let everyone just see how truly gifted you are. TikTok is a website that can be used for business for your club. Did you know that? So first of all, you set your goals. You select your club objectives as getting guests and you target 24 to 40 year olds and they'll even help you create the ad or you can upload your own videos and photos. They also have tools that help you create an intuitive video. Have each member do a silly table topic and cut out the best part of it, then record it and post it on TikTok. Be sure to create a club account first and then post your meeting time and space on it as though it were a business. Your clubs and members can join LinkedIn and your club can have a page that others find you and connect with. Those members who choose creating a blog in level four and pathways, uh, they, can, they can create that for you and get credit for it. Here's just one of the many clubs that are on LinkedIn. Flip. Who's heard of Flip? Flip is a video discussion app free from Microsoft where curious minds connect. They share short videos and of course they build community there. Flip started in the classroom and it's grown since and it has diverse creative communities and it's a global thing. So you might even pick up members from another country for your club. Now for corporate clubs, you can use Microsoft SharePoint in conjunction with your Microsoft Office 365 to share videos of speeches and even to announce your club meetings. You can send coworkers video announcements of your club meetings or club events. You can make videos or even build your own Toastmasters intranet using SharePoint. So you're a club officer, get your team, your fellow executive board members together and think of an outrageous way to get the attention of someone who just completed their degree. Someone who watches something called TikTok until it makes you crazy. Your adult child or even your boss. Try that. <laughs> Only our cats must never think outside the box. Toastmasters can think outside the box to grow their club. If you're in a corporate club, or you work for a company that has oh, 50, 70, 100 employees across locations, you can attract members with this flyer. Take a picture of it now and include it in an email to others in your company. It reinforces several skills that your clubs help members with. Hmm? Okay, Toastmasters is a cost-effective way to retain staff. You can have employees who speak more confidently in front of clients and executives, it helps employees, <laughs> helps employees with enhanced soft skills, increases camaraderie and knowledge of how to participate as a team, it improves meeting facilitation, and the obvious, of course, employees with improved communication, leadership, and public speaking skills. The bottom line is, a more confident staff who can think clearly on their feet. Another way to use the picture you just took is to print it and post it around the company. You can show it during your team's meeting. How about that? Pathways is designed to help you with your career. Maybe that's why many people resist it because they don't realize that that's part of its design. huh? Finding members for your club can be based on the badges. Use the badges to promote your club, especially if you're a corporate club. See how it fits into your job or somebody else's job and tell them there's help here. For example, when someone says they need to motivate other employees, tell them about motivational strategies. That's an option that they can pursue there. 
then email the badge with an explanation of what that path includes to them. For your sales department, how about uh, persuasive influence or maybe strategic relationships paths? That might be just what they need to succeed. And you know what? If you get more members like that that are career oriented, you'll have a lot more fun at your meetings too. Uh, do you know any recent college grads? Well, they're looking for jobs, right? They're looking for a career path. Tell them about the leadership development path. You can also post your badge on LinkedIn as well and indicate that you're a member of Toastmasters International. Now, if that doesn't make them want to join, I don't know what will. Here's a question. How many badges can you collect? I remember when I was a Girl Scout, I had a sash and I had a lot of badges on there. I was interested in collecting badges. So how many can you collect? Pathways contains a mix of required and elective projects. It offers a personal, personalized style of learning. Participants can tailor their experiences to their own goals. And working online, of course, is very flexible. You could do it at work, at home, on the bus, or train on the way home. If you're a passenger in a carpool, you could do that. Or if you work at home, maybe that's your lunch break. Or think outside the box. Pathways is like their college degree. Promote it that way. Communication and leadership is their degree. Their path is their minor. How's that for outside the box thinking? Okay, whether you belong to a corporate club or a community club, this is a great flyer that you can turn into a poster. Then visit local restaurants, churches, schools, and ask to post this to notify people that your club can help them with their public speaking skills. Here's an outside the box idea. When someone calls you selling you something, oh, hello, this is ABC Auto Warranty. Well, tell them about your club and how it can help them sound better over the phone. Ask if you can send this flyer to them by their email and ask them for their email address. Maybe you just might get a telemarketer as part of your hybrid meeting membership. You can order this item. Uh, you could download it or just take a picture of it and then you could text it to others. How about that? Oh, this, we're coming to my favorite part. I love these ribbons. They are so inexpensive and they can do a lot of club building for you. It's a really inexpensive way for you to greet guests at your club. You could distribute this at an open house. So you could take a picture of it and award it to a guest in your virtual club. If you don't know how to do that, then press the print screen button. It's at the very top row. Uh, mine has a group of three and it says print SCRN. You push that and then the screen goes dark for a few minutes and then it gives you a plus sign where you can outline the ribbon. So you outline that ribbon and then paste it into a Word document and save it. Then when you have a Zoom meeting, all you do is you post that and you say, uh, welcome, Teresa, I'm glad you could make it to the meeting today and award that ribbon to her. Now here's another one, another good idea. Get a black marker and write your club meeting day and times on the back of the ribbon. Hand them out to people at the library or in the building where you meet. They're very inexpensive. It's more fun than a business card too. It can also be used as a bookmark. So here's another outside the box idea. Place them inside books on public speaking or maybe on leadership books at your local library. Right there on the back of it is when your club meets, the day, the time, the place, or in your corporate library. Put where it is, put your Zoom link on there. People who thumb through the book might be your next guest, right? Very inexpensive way for you to announce your club. <laughs> now, speaking of bookmarks, uh, print this and give it to members during your next membership drive. You can take a picture of this right now. Uh, they can use one, they could give it to a friend, or you could email me at toastmaster at peoplepc.com and I'll send the file to you. Or create your own, they're easy peasy. Uh, make your own bookmarks on cardstock 
and then cut them and hand them out. You can take them to your local UPS store or Staples and they can cut them nice and straight for you. Oh, here's another great idea. Sponsor a storytelling night and invite the public. Have your members rehearse a speech or maybe have a theme on the funniest moments of your life. Invite the public to apply for a spot. And you could do a magazine article or a newspaper article. You might title it Funny Stories Wanted. And, and here's how it might sound. Local nonprofit organization will sponsor a public storytelling event on month, day, year, and invites the public to apply for a spot in the lineup. The ABC Toastmasters, which meets on the first and third X day of every month, will accept a brief video application to be considered for the event, which is scheduled at XXXXX, 123 ABC Street in XX, Kentucky, on XX12 at 20XX. The video should give a brief summary of your story. You find your final presentation should be no more than XX minutes in length and suitable for families. Please send the video to XX and XXX.com by XX2320 XX. A lot of X's in there. So you might turn that into your club international contest also. Either ask them to make funny stories or just invite the public to tell a story. Now they don't need to know that you're actually mixing them with Toastmasters. They just don't get first place, right? You might also combine your event with food. Food events always get a lot of people. Hey, how about a chili cook-off or maybe a brownie bake-off? Maybe a cutest doggy contest and ask local officials to be the judges. Who can resist those cute little doggy faces? Here's something else. At a meeting, hand out post-it notes and ask each member to write their name and the email address of two people that they think might benefit from Toastmasters. Then collect the post-it notes and send an email to each one and say something like, a friend recommended that we invite you to our next meeting. We help our members improve their public speaking skills, gain confidence when presenting, and overcome the fear of public speaking. We offer experiential leadership roles and run our meetings efficiently and on time. Please visit us the first and third Tuesday of every month at 12 noon at Bankers Bank, 123 4th Street, Comedy City, Indiana. Offer a reward of some, some sort to your member if a friend shows up. Now here's a related idea. Help your members create an email template they can use to invite coworkers. If you have a corporate club or friends, neighbors, acquaintances, if you have a community club, once created, email it to each member and ask them to copy and paste it into an email to as many friends or coworkers as possible. It would read like this. Oh, hey, Terry, have you noticed that I'm speaking up in meetings lately? Or maybe like this one. Hi, Bruno. I have been working on my team's appearance. Have you noticed that I sit farther back so you can see the gestures I use? Have you noticed that I changed my background to show my hobbies and family pics behind me? Yes? Well, I learned it by going to a Toastmasters meeting. I would love, enjoy, I would enjoy having you as my next guest. <clears throat> well, here we are at the end of my ideas. Have you thought of something else along the way? Email it to me at toastmaster at peoplespc.com. Do you have a club newsletter? If you need help starting one, contact our District 11 public relations manager via our D11 website, and he will help you. Send the newsletter to members and ask them to forward to a friend or a coworker, <clears throat> especially in corporate clubs. Write about it on your club website and provide your VP PR email if they want to subscribe to it. Do the same for your company newsletter. In it, offer tips on public speaking. Get ideas from Pathways. Just read through that material in Pathways and it'll give you a couple ideas on how you can promote it. Get your board together and brainstorm this. You can publicize a special meeting 
where you will teach people how to improve their appearance on Zoom, for example. Okay, last one. Have some club business cards planted, uh, bleh, printed with the name of your club. The days and times you meet, you know, and put the place on there. Hand some out to members and ask them to present them next time they go to church or another organization. And maybe even at work or another meeting. Vistaprint has 100 cards for $18. So that's really a very reasonable way to promote your club too. So you've heard some ways to find new members for your club. What can you do to pre prepare your club for new members? Start by downloading Moments of Truth at Toastmasters.org and use it as a guide to better quality meetings. Here's a stellar idea. Ask your area director to help you meet the best practices that Toastmasters International has laid out for you in that exercise. <clears throat> Get all your members going in pathways. This is essential. Once they get excited about Pathways, there's a buzz, and they'll have little quips to tell your guests at the meeting. In January, you're going to find a new look and a new feel to Pathways. You and your members will be able to access it more easily. There are three club officers automatically on the committee to help members with Pathways. Do you know which officers? We went over this in round one. Do you know? President, secretary, and mainly your VP of education. Finally, lavishly use rewards and recognition. Let me say that again. Lavishly use rewards and recognition. People love, love, love to be recognized for doing something, anything. We love to receive an honor that nobody else got. Use our best speaker, best evaluator, and best topic ribbons at every meeting. They work. People come back and they strive to earn those rewards. They're so inexpensive. It's an easy peasy way for you to build your membership. We're adults. Our feelings won't be hurt if we don't get a ribbon. But using ribbons will increase the good feelings that we get at a club meeting. When an individual does visit a club, the treatment they receive from current members during their visit is a strong factor in the decision whether to join a club or not. At every meeting, all members should make every effort to greet guests at the door as they arrive, sit with guests during the meeting, speak with a guest after the meeting, invite the guest to join members for any after meeting socializing, and finally, ask the guest, guest to visit again. To end this session, I'll say that Toastmasters is a very personal organization in that people are brought into the club on a personal basis. A club's membership will grow only as each member becomes personally involved. One enthusiastic person can bring in more members to a club than all the tools ever devised by a membership committee. Always keep the club's memberships, membership efforts personal, helpful, and friendly. Thank you for attending this training module.